Okay, so this is 3.7, video three. So we're just doing more examples. <clears throat> Again, if you've already figured out that you don't need any more, then maybe you don't need to watch these, but um, we're gonna do more examples. So find the dimensions of the largest rectangular field enclosed by 100 feet of fencing. All right, so we've got a rectangular field, so we'll draw ourselves our rectangle. Doesn't really matter which direction. I'm going to call that the length. I'm going to call that the width. So let's see, what do we have? We want to find the dimensions of the largest rectangular field enclosed by 100 feet of fencing. So I know that it's enclosed by 100 feet of fencing. That's the perimeter. So I know that 100 is the perimeter, and I know how to find the perimeter of a rectangle. It's going to be twice the length and twice the width because I really have two lengths and two widths. So I'm going to have 2L plus 2W. That's really the secondary equation. The reason I know that is because it's giving me that the uh, perimeter is 100. So I have a way to solve that for either L or for W. The primary equation then is just going to be the area equation of length times width. So I can Let's see, the secondary equation, I can divide everything by 2 to make it a little bit easier. So that'll be 50 equals L plus W, and then I can solve that for either L or W. Doesn't matter which one, I'm going to choose to solve it for L, so I'll subtract W on both sides. So the length is going to equal 50 minus the width, which then gives me a way to substitute into my area equation. So area is going to be 50 minus W times W. So it looks like I now have distributing the W, 50W minus W squared. So area is now all in terms of one variable. So I can take the derivative, which is going to be 50 minus 2W, set that equal to zero to find the critical values. So adding 2W to both sides and then dividing by two, gives us that W equals 25. I can take a second derivative to do the second derivative test, which is just going to be negative 2. So it really doesn't matter what the value is because the second derivative is always negative, which means that it is concave down, which means that we have a maximum. And we were trying to, I believe we were trying to maximize, find the dimensions of the largest, yeah, largest rectangular field, so maximizing the rectangular field. So the largest rectangular field is going to be when the width is 25, and it actually does say to find the dimensions. So if the width is 25, plugging that back in to this equation right here to find the length, the length is also going to be 25. And that actually makes sense. A rectangular field or a rectangular um, shape is going to be maximized when it's a square. <clears throat> so really what we have is the length and the width are 25. So a 25 by 25, um, what is this, feet? So it's feet squared um, area. So there's your dimensions of your largest rectangular field, 25 by 25. Okay, a manufacturer wants to design an open box. So here we go again with the open box having a square base and a surface area of 108 square inches. <clears throat> All right, so we know that the base of this thing, the, the box is going to have a square base. So let's see if I can kind of sketch this. So we're going to have a square base, and then the height of this thing is not exactly going to be a square. Hey, that wasn't so bad. So the base of its square, and it's going to have a surface area of 108 square inches. So I know that the base is going to be square, which means the length and the width are the same. The height is something I don't know. <clears throat> All right. I know that the volume of this is going to be length times width times height, but length and width are x, so it's going to be x squared. So volume is going to be x squared times height. Okay, length times width times height. Um, 
it says that the surface area is 108 square inches. So the surface area is the area of all of the outside pieces. So it looks like the base and uh, it says an open box. So the top is not there. So the base is going to be x squared. That's the area, surface area of the base. Uh, it looks like the surface area of all of the sides are going to be x times h. So I have four of those. <clears throat> and then there's no top. So that's got to equal 108 because that's the surface area of this open box. So that's actually going to be the piece that I'm going to use to substitute something into my volume equation. <clears throat> it honestly looks like here the easiest thing to solve this for is h. Solving for x is going to be difficult because I've got an x squared and another x. So solving that for x is going to be challenging. So let's go ahead and rewrite the secondary equation solving it for h. So we'll subtract x squared on both sides. So we get 4xh equals 108 minus x squared. And then we're going to divide everything by 4x. <clears throat> so h is going to be 108 minus x squared over 4x. All right, so I think I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, I'm going to plug this in, and then we're going to have to do some simplification here. So volume is going to equal x squared times our new h, which is 108 minus x squared over 4x. <clears throat> so if I were to multiply that in, one of the x's here from the outside is going to get rid of this x down there. So I'm really going to distribute the x through the top. So that's going to be the same as 108x minus x cubed over 4. Let's go ahead and simplify that a little bit to make taking the derivative easier. So I can divide each piece by 4. So 108 x divided by 4. 108 divided by 4 is, um, what is that, 27? So we get 27x. And then x cubed divided by 4, it's just x cubed divided by 4, but I'm going to rewrite it as 1 fourth x cubed. Again, just to make it a little easier to look at to take a derivative, because now I can just use the power rule. So my derivative is going to be 27 minus bringing the 3 out to the front, 3 fourths x squared. And I want to go ahead and set that equal to 0 to find the critical values. So let's add the 3 fourths x squared to the right. <clears throat> All right, so to get that thing down to x squared, we're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is 4 thirds. So multiplying 27 by 4 thirds, I could multiply 27 by 4 and then divide by 3, or I could divide by 3 first and then multiply it by 4. It's probably easier to do that. So 27 divided by 3 is 9 times 4 is 36. So we're going to get that x squared equals 36. This works out really nicely because then x is going to equal positive or negative 6, but I believe we are trying to find lengths of things, so 6 is really what we're looking at. Let's see. We are trying to find the dimensions. Yes, the dimensions of the box that's going to maximize the volume. We Notice we don't have to find the volume, just the dimensions. So I know that x is 6. Well, that takes care of the length and the width, so now we just have to find the height. So we have an equation right here that I can just plug 6 into and find the height. So I know that the height is going to be 108 minus 6 squared, which is 36, over 4 times 6, which is 24. So 108 minus 36 is 72, and 72 divided by 24 is 3. So my dimensions are going to be a 6 by 6 by 3. What were the units here? Inches. Inches cubed box. All right, let's keep going. A cylindrical cup is to be made from 12 square inches of aluminum, which is the largest possible volume of such a cup. Okay, keep in mind this is a cup. 
So the way I kind of picture this is it's really going to be a cylinder, but it's going to be an open top. So you're going to have the open part of your cup up there and then a cylinder for the rest of it. So this, the top part is open. It's not going to contain both sides. So let's see, we've got 12 square inches of aluminum um, to make this cup. So that means that's going to be the surface area. So we have to come up with a formula for the surface area. The primary equation is probably going to be the volume of a cylinder. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared, it's the base, times the height, h. All right, so the secondary equation, well, let's think about this. I've got 12 square inches, so I know that's my surface area. <clears throat> I'm going to have to figure out a way to write the surface area. If you were to cut that aluminum cup straight down the side, so basically cut it like right there and then open it up, what you're looking at <clears throat> is something that looks like this. Okay, that's the lateral face of the cup. Then you also have to take into account that you've got the circular bottom, so it's going to look something like that when you open it up. So really what I have to take into account here for the surface area is the surface area of those two pieces. Well, the surface area of the bottom, that's the easy part. That's just going to be pi r squared, because that's a circle. Then we have a length times a height, or a length times a width for that rectangular piece, which again, when you fold it up, it's going to become the, the lateral face of the cup. Um, so the height is just h. And the length of this thing, now you got to think about this one, this piece right here, when you were to fold that or round it back up, it basically becomes this part of the cup right here, which is the circumference of a circle. And that's 2 pi r. So height times 2 pi r. Okay, so now we have our secondary equation. Looking at that secondary equation, it definitely looks like the h is the easiest thing to solve for because r is going to be squared in one term and not in the other. So let's solve that for h. So we've got 12 minus pi r squared is going to equal um, h times 2 pi r. Now if we divide the whole thing by 2 pi r, we're going to get 12 minus pi r squared over 2 pi r equals h. So now I have a way to substitute that back into the volume. So the volume is going to be pi r squared times 12 minus pi r squared over 2 pi r. That looks like a mess, but we can simplify it just a little bit. Let's see. This pi is going to get rid of this pi. The One of these r's is going to go away with one of those r's. So it looks like I'm going to distribute an r through the top. So we're going to get 12r minus pi r cubed. I still have a 2 in the denominator. So again, let's make it a little bit easier on ourselves. Let's divide each term by 2. So the volume is going to be 6r minus 1 half pi r cubed. Now we can take a derivative. v prime is going to be 6 minus, bringing the 3 out in the front, you're going to get 3 halves pi, remember pi is a constant, r squared. Set that equal to 0 to find the critical values. We'll add the 3 halves pi r squared to both sides. Multiplying by 2 and then dividing by 3 on both sides is going to be 12 over 3 is 4. So we get that 4 equals pi r squared. We have to divide both sides by pi. And then take the square root. So really what we get is r is going to be the square root of 4 over pi. I could take the square root of the top and bottom and get 2 over the square root of pi. That's fine. Notice again, I do not need the negative because we are talking about r, which in this case is a radius. And it's not going to be a negative radius of a cup. All right, <clears throat> so what are we asked to find? What is the largest possible volume? So we are actually trying to maximize the volume. So let's go ahead and take a second derivative to make sure that what we have there is actually the maximum. 
So the second derivative, the 6 goes away, is going to be 3 pi r, negative 3 pi r, excuse me. So if I plug in that square root of 4 over pi, I'm going to get negative 3 times pi times this square root, whatever that is, it's going to be a negative value. That's negative, which means it's concave down, which means that we have indeed a maximum. <clears throat> so that R value maximizes the volume. To find the maximum volume, I just plug that back in. Here is the equation for volume right here, so let's plug it in. So we get 12 times that square root minus pi times that square root cubed over 2. I have absolutely no idea what that um, what that is approximately. You'd have to plug that one into a calculator. There's no way to do that one easily. That's the exact volume, whatever it is. And what are the units here? Um, inches. So that would be an inches cubed. That would be your maximum volume. And again, you could plug it into a calculator to get a decimal approximation, which would probably mean more than seeing what we're seeing there. All right, one more example. So we will get this all done in this last video here. A gardener wishes to create two equal sized gardens by enclosing a rectangular area with 300 feet of fencing and fence it down the middle. What is the largest rectangular area that might be enclosed, that may be enclosed? So it looks like we've got a rectangular area with 300 feet of fencing, but there's also an additional fence right down the middle. So all that means is that I'm going to have a length on the top and the bottom, but I'm going to have three widths worth of fencing. And it's given me 300 total feet of fencing. So again, that's the perimeter. That should be our secondary equation. The 300 is going to equal two lengths plus three widths. And then our primary equation, of course, is just length times width. <clears throat> all right, so again, we could solve the secondary equation for either L or for W, it, again, it really doesn't make any difference. Um, I don't know. Let's just solve it for L. I just like solving for L. So we're going to get 300 minus 3W equals 2L, dividing everything by 2, 150 minus 3 halves W will equal L. Okay, that gives me something I can plug in. So now my new area equation is going to be my new L, which is 150 minus 3 halves W times W. Distributing 150 W minus 3 halves W squared. Let's go ahead and take a derivative. So A prime is going to be 150. 2 times 3 halves is 3, so 3W three equals 0. This is going to work out easily. 150 then equals 3w, so w dividing by 3 is going to equal 50. Let's double check that this is going to actually be um, a maximum. So a double prime is just going to be negative 3. No w is left over, so the second derivative is always negative, which means that it is concave down, which means that we have a maximum. So W equals 50 will maximize, and we are trying to find what is the largest rectangular area. We are actually trying to find the area. So I have an area equation. So the maximum area is going to occur when W is 50. So I'm just going to go to um, this one. 150 times 50 minus 3 halves. 50 squared. Okay, it probably would have actually been easier to use a different equation, but um, either way, it's still going to work out. So let's see. <clears throat> 150 times 50 is going to be 7,500, I believe. I think that's right. 50 squared is 2,500. 2,500 divided by 2 is 1,250 times 3 is going to be 37.50. So I believe that the maximum area subtracting those is 3,750 3, feet squared. 
because it's an area. So there is our maximum area. All right, that should pl be plenty enough examples. Um, unfortunately, there's no way to possibly do all the examples that you could possibly see for optimization, but that should give you a really good start.